Hey guys, it's your girl Shamar. Come on in the van. Guys, I just got back off the road. And I gotta tell you, it was a nice road trip. Usually, usually when I have to go to a big city, I'm all anxious. Uh, and but what big city am I talking about, right guys? I, I went down to um, Atlanta, Georgia. I had to exchange Gavin, uh, my son, and he's with his dad now for the next month. Um, so I had to fly out there. I left Tuesday night, got down there Wednesday morning, uh, which happened to be Gavin's birthday. Um, and then I had 14 hours in Georgia before my flight left. And I just want to say, shout out. Wait, let me tell y'all something, man. Sometimes you meet people and um, in Israel, right? I know that we have a new kingdom to go into, guys. And... I think in this new kingdom, every role is going to be needed, right? And my role, I think, is one of a teacher of sorts, right, guys? Um, a leader, a teacher. Um, we're going to need healers. That's just not something Shamar does, okay, guys? <laughs> it just ain't. But I know we're going to need that in our kingdom. And so when I'm in the company of what I know is going to be our family's healer, I am um, very pleased and I can recognize it. So I got to meet what I think will be a healer for the frontline guys. And I'm excited for you guys. Um, the energy when I got around our healer guys is like, I could tell like what their purpose is going to be. You know, a lot of times you guys are maybe uh, focused on my purpose uh, because you're listening to me, but I'm also looking to see who mother's sending us, you know, because I can't do everything on this land that she's given me, right? And I'm looking for that. And um, shout out to, shout out to Mimi. Shout out to Mimi and her family in the A. They just being in their company, um, just the love that they shared and showed me, uh, Israel, I don't have words for it. I'm in awe because a lot of times I feel like I'm alone. But, you know, you guys listen in every week, so I'm not taking that for granted. And to meet and feel the love and the energy that I know is going to be wrapped around our family through some of our own some of the family that's being sent to us, I'm amazed. Just that few 14 hours, guys, I feel healed. I feel great. I feel like I was shown a lot of love and hospitality. And as a result of that, just those just those few hours, guys, I feel, I feel rejuvenated, guys. I feel great. Normally, I come back from Georgia and I'm exhausted because it's 14 hours, you know, that I'm just there for. But I've done all of this running. I've left from Phoenix. You know, so it's a lot that goes into it, but I feel, I feel rejuvenated, man. I, I was shown so much love and so much hospitality. I wasn't allowed to leave until I had a great meal. And for that, I'm eternally thankful. So shout out to Mimi and the family down there and um, in the A. Much love. I can't wait to see you guys again, man. Much love. These are our healers, guys. These are, um, Mimi's a grower. She's got a garden going. So you know, guys, you're going to bring all of your talents and um, all of your skill. And it's going to come together as a great community, guys. So got to meet one of our community members and got to feel a lot of love. So this week, guys, we're back on the front line, guys. And y'all know I always kick it off with a photo, right, guys? So um, in the background, what do we got going? These are guys that are tilling. These are tillers men. Sorry, tillers men. These are men that um, are out there with uh, tools. Right, guys? Tools to help them to till the earth. You know, guys, um, this is what we respectively did here before we were invaded. We cultivated our land. We didn't exploit our land. 
we didn't strike the rock here. You know, this is why Moses wasn't allowed in. For striking the rock. We left the oil in the land. Instead, we focused on the land. We took care of it. We tilled it. Just like these guys in this photo. These men are designed to do this job. Look how the earth is flourishing behind them. Look at the pretty rich green grass behind these men. This is an honorable task. Somehow we have been taught to believe that this ain't honorable. That flipping some numbers on Wall Street that that's earning something by the sweat of your brow. When will we realize that we are designed differently? If I went out there and tried to lift up one of these till tools and do what these men are doing, I wouldn't be so successful. I don't have these motive neurons for this job. That's like if I hired these guys right here that are in this photo and they showed up to my house, instead of with these tools in their hand, they had a calculator and a laptop for this job. I would send them on their way. I would say, y'all aren't tillers. What in the hell are y'all doing with this laptop and this calculator? You don't have the tools that I need. You, you don't have the muscles to do this job. The man and the woman are designed for different jobs, guys. And it's nothing disrespectful about that. These men right here seem eager to see the land produce. Back in the day, Israel, you were eager to see the land produce. I want us to talk this week about Genesis 3.16, guys. This paragraph right here doesn't start with because you did this, Eve. In this chapter, you're going to see punishments handed out. You'll see a curse as well that curse goes to the serpent guys we've discussed that but I want to focus on Eve in 316 reason being guys is because there's a lot of people that will say that this is Eve's curse right or it's even her punishment right guys I in the past said that this is Eve's this is Eve's punishment right here, guys. Not realizing that this, when everybody's being spoken to, Eve is the only one that doesn't hear. Because you did this when she's spoken to. That's said to the serpent. That is said to Adam. That's never said to Eve. That because you did this, Eve, you're going to have babies in pain. This is your punishment. And because you did this, Eve, he's going to rule over you. Where do you see that at, guys, in this paragraph? We're going to talk about this paragraph because there is a misinterpret sorry, a misinterpretation of this paragraph that has gone on for far too long. I don't read over here that because Eve did this, she's going to have babies in pain. I don't read over here because Eve did this, this man has a right to rule over her. This husband. Let's read it real quick, guys. 
Let's read it real quick. To the woman, also he said, I will multiply thy sorrows and thy conceptions. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thou shalt be under thy husband's power, and he shall have dominion over thee. Okay. Let's go back up here and talk about it for a little while. Right here it says, I will multiply thy sorrows. Right, guys? I will multiply thy sorrows. Feelings of deep distress caused by loss. Let's see what sorrow means, guys. Disappointment or other misfortunes suffered by one's self or others. Let's read it again. A feeling of deep distress caused by loss, disappointment, or other misfortune suffered by oneself or others. So this is the sorrow, loss, right? If she's the mother of all of the living, then she knows sorrow. She would have experienced loss whenever one of her children dies. So could that be the loss, the sorrows that the Creator is speaking of, that Eve will feel. Let's also talk about the conceptions. The action of conceiving a child. Or a child being conceived, an unfertilized egg before conception. All right, so you're going to be multiplying births, all right? This is what's told to Eve. I'll multiply your sorrows and you're going to have more births. So you're going to experience more loss and you're actually going to experience birthing the conceptions with an S. So it says, in sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. I don't know that Eve was designed to give birth prior to that. So with her design being made already, maybe the perhaps, perhaps the creator is saying like, listen, you know, I didn't design you to give birth, but we're going to figure out how that's going to happen. And as a result of it, you're going to be in pain, you know, keeping it real with her. But never once has it said, hey, because you did this, you're going to bring forth those children in pain. It's not told to her that. And it next, the next sentence says, and thou shalt be under thy husband's power. He shall have dominion over thee. Right, guys? Dominion, sovereignty, or control. Guys, some people says that when you look at this word over, you know, the word over can be used in two different ways. Right, guys? So to have dominion over is to have power over her being. Right. We can interpret that as the the man having the husband having power and sovereignty over her being. Or we can interpret that as the man having power and sovereignty, sorry, sovereignty instead of her. But somehow we've interpreted this the first way that the man would have dominion over her person, over this woman as a being. We never interpreted it that the man would have dominion instead of her, right? And we definitely don't see where Eve is told that that's the man's right, right guys? Because we're reading this in Genesis 3 and 16, right guys? But let me show you something prior to this. Before things were spun upside down in the garden. Let me show you what was told prior to this. In Genesis 2 and 24, the creator says, Wherefore it, sorry, wherefore a man shall leave father and mother so this is guys pay attention this is the man that has to leave 
all right, the man shall leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be two in one flesh. Remember guys, two in one flesh is to give birth guys because that's the only way you get one flesh, okay? But prior to three and 16, Adam is known to be told to cleave to his wife, that that is the design of the ezer. The disease, the, sorry, the diseaser. The ezer is designed much like that calculator, much like that laptop. She's got her own purpose, guys. Just like he has his own purpose. His purpose is a machine that is to tell, guys. It's a back-breaking work right here that we see on this front page, guys. This is Adam's design. It's back-breaking work. And Adam is to cleave. He's to leave his father and mother. The expectation of any sons of Adam, you know, at that point are to leave the father and mother, but to join in the union and cleave to his wife. That's the easer that he is to cleave to. Instead, we see Eve is told that he's going to have dominion. He's going to be running things instead of you. You see? Over is not over her being, guys. Over is instead of. See what I'm saying? We are living in a world where the man has dominion instead of the woman. Watch this. The word husband, guys, let's talk about it. I've done this in the past, but sometimes we got to rehash some stuff, guys, because I haven't visited this in a long time. And I'm ready to talk about these roles, guys, because I think that we view them as a bit demeaning. And we've had other nations make us feel like we should feel demeaned about wanting to tend to the soil and listening to our women because it's a laughable thing, huh? Oh, you listen to your woman? I bet you she tells you everything to do, huh? And, and men, your ego is bruised when somebody tells you something like that jokingly. So picture on a grand scale what that looks like. Check this out. The husband. All right, this is the KJV definition, right? This is what they came with when they came to our shores, right? A man contracted or joined to a woman by marriage. A man whom a woman is betrothed as well as some actually united by marriage is called a husband, all right? In seaman language, the owner of a ship who manages its concerns in person. The male of an animal of a lower order. Remember I done told y'all guys that the man is the only one linked to uh, the word mortal, right guys? Which we know why Adam is not allowed to stretch his hand out and reach. All right, number four, an economist. See, now this is what, this is what Ken liked. This is what Adam liked, right? Ken's name means man of fire, right? This is what Adam likes right here, an economist. Wall Street, guys, a good manager, a man who knows and practice, practices the methods of frugality and profit, right? This is why they like Wall Street. In this sense, the word is modified by an epithet as a good husband, a bad husband. But in America, pay attention, guys. I want y'all to pay a special attention to this sentence right here. In America, this application of the word is little or not at all used. It was a derogatory term, guys. I, a husband was only focused on economy, all right? All right, a farmer, a cultivator, a tiller of the ground. In this sense, it is used in America. We always used husbandman. You see, guys, before they invaded you, you didn't call your men husbands. You called your mate a husbandman. So what is a husbandman, guys? Let's, 
let's get into what the husband man is. Let's see what they're going to tell us right here. A person who cultivates the land. A farmer. All right, let's see what uh, KJV going to tell us it is in 1611. Let's see what he's going to say it is. Come on, guys. Let's see, the symbiotic relationship that we once had in our nation, how we cultivated our land and respected our land. Look, they don't even want to give you a big old definition like they did with the husband, right? Because this is such a meaningless task. Husbandman, a farmer, a cultivator, or tiller of the ground. I, an implement or machine for breaking up soil. Look what a tiller is, guys. A, an implement or a machine meant to break up ground, right? It says a horizontal bar fitted to the head of a boat's rudder, posted and used as a lever for ste steering, guys. All right, so um, it's a machine operated or even like hand machine operated tool, right? But it is, in fact, uh, meant to break up soil. A tiller of the ground, one who labors in tillage. In America, when men generally owned the land on which they labored, the proprietor of a land is also a laborer or a husbandman. But the word includes the leasee and the owner. The master of a family, not in use in America. I repeat, not in use in America. You were not the master of a family in America. You were the husbandman in America. Okay, guys, you were the tiller. You were the one that went out there and grew and fed your family. Now, was this a dishonorable task? By no means. You didn't care about being the master of the family in America. You were okay with that, and you were thriving. Check it out. You you were thriving. Watch this, guys. Watch this, men. Husbandmen. One whose business it is. Let's say it again. One whose business it is to cultivate the ground. It was one of the first occupations and was esteemed, held in great respect and admired, guys. It was honorable. Something that would bring you worthy of honor, guys, is what honorable means, guys. So this was a task that was esteemed and honorable. All Hebrews, expect, except those engaged in religious services were husband man so you're not doing this anymore now are you right because when they came in and captured you and put you under a christian christian belief system right put you under a religious service because now you're engaged in a religious service whether you recognize it or not the very way you get married is engaged in a religious service israel the very way you get married is engaged in a religious service. So now the fact that you don't cultivate your land, you're engaged in a religious service. You are no longer a husband man. You are no longer doing something honorable or esteemed. No, no, you're not. You're engaged in a religious service. See? right here ever since they invaded you and told you to be a husband instead of a husband man Israel wake the fuck up you are engaged in a religious service by being an economist a good manager, right? By being, by being a husband, right? Where'd it go? By being a husband right here, 
in America, we never use that term, right, guys? I done showed y'all this right here. By being the manager of the family, you are engaged in a religious service. It's called the pater familias, where the man is the head of the family. That's what you're doing, Israel. Right here. You don't want to use your motor neurons to cultivate, right? Which is an honorable, esteemed task. Where to go? That's an honorable, esteemed task. Instead, you want to manage the family, right? This is how they got you flipped on your head, right? The soil probably responds to you better than me. You are made from the soil, man. It's an esteemed and honorable job, but you don't think so because you were told you had to do it. Instead, you want to manage the family and engage in a religious service. You don't want to step into your role. We need you to. This earth needs you too step into your role. Our land has been pillaged by a den of robbers in the tribe that's called Judah. Precious sons, we need you to step into this honorable role. We need you to no longer engage in this religious service uh, of being a husband. We need you to be a husband man. That's what the creator was asking Abraham to be. Abraham instead wanted to gather the resources. The creator tells Abraham basically what was told to man in Genesis 2 and 24, to cleave to your wife. Remember, Seth is running around calling on the Lord at this time. There are many men raising themselves up and calling themselves lords instead of cultivating the land. In other nations, we're seeing men raise themselves up. And then we see Israel come and say, hey, we, we want to do this too instead. We feel like fools because all we do is cultivate the land and listen to our women. You know, we feel like fools. We want to, we want to listen to a man instead. We want a man to tell us what to do. Check it out. Right here, I told y'all last week about the significance of what happened during this name changing and how even though Abraham's name is changed to Abraham, we don't see the creator put out an edict that, hey, Sarah, you, you, Saray, make sure you call Abraham Abraham. No, we don't, we don't see that actually, but we see the opposite. We see this man being told, you want a part of my covenant? You are to call her chief. We see Abraham don't like that too much. Just like uh, Adam ain't like it too much. You know what I mean? Adam is mad. I told y'all that Adam is disgruntled. Instead of Adam saying, you know what? I fucked up. Let me live in my punishment. Let me try to redeem myself. Adam is mad. Adam is making Wall Street, guys. So Adam don't got to kill. Trust me on this. That's the whole point of Wall Street. You've seen that bull. I'm from New York, guys. I've been down there in the Wall Street district. This bull is a man-made bull. I had a dream when I was younger about a fiery bull chasing me. This bull, guys, represents the patriarchy. This represents the man-made systems where the man don't got to till. The man can be king of his castle. He can rule over a woman, over an Ezer in his home. Xerxes gave you that. 
after Esther dropped it like it was hot. I'm trying to tell y'all how the story went. Listen to this. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for a perpetual covenant. All right. The male whose flesh of his foreskin shall not be circumcised. That soul shall be destroyed out of his people because he hath broken my covenant. God said also to Abraham, Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call Sarai, but Sarah. You are to call her chief. You are to cling to her. That's what you're to do, Abraham. But Abraham didn't like that, guys. No, he didn't. Before he's told this, he tithes to Melchizedek. He's got the order wrong. The creator says, I'm going to set this straight for you. Call her chief. After that, he creates a covenant with Abimelech. He don't like it much that he has to call Saray chief. Because in the patriarchy, he's the chief. In the Baal system, he's the head of the household. He's the family manager in that false religious practice. He is the head. He has dominion. He don't got to call her chief. He don't got to cling to his wife. He's the good manager. Right? There you go. He is engaged in a religious service. You see? When he's the husband. This is what got told to Eve. Men, when you sit up here and say, it's my right to rule over you, I'm the husband. Yeah? You're engaged in a religious service when you call yourself that. Husband man, tiller, cultivator, highly esteemed, honorable man, you are turning it over. Instead, you're gonna engage yourself in a religious service just so you can manage the family. right here. And we didn't do that in America. You indigenous, huh? Chief? You indigenous, sir? Then you ain't the chief and you ain't the manager of the family. But you're doing something honorable, cultivator. You want to know how we lived here? Let me show you something. We damn sure ain't lived like this. Because that wasn't shown to us. There's a reason why Adam is linked to Rome. Right? There is a reason Adam is linked to Rome. The pater familius came out of Rome. The headship, the father is head, came out of Rome. And we see here that Adam, right, is the first patriarch. This is the false religion that you are engaged in. This is the sin that Adam hid in his bosom. Right here, this patriarchy. This isn't what the Creator asks for. The Creator asks you guys to be husbandmen.
and the Creator assigned her as chief. This is the kingdom waiting for you guys. There won't be anything else. A new thing is going to be done in the earth. You decide if you want to be a part of it. There's only one job waiting for you here. It ain't crowns. It ain't gold. It's this right here. Because after they've destroyed everything, do you want to help build it back up, Israel? Do you want to see the streams flow again? Do you want to see the green grass again? Do you want to go out to your gardens again? And come home to your family? Or do you want to keep engaging in this religious service? Because in our new kingdom, there's only room for a husband then. Not a husband. You won't have dominion over anything. Remember, you heard it here on the front line first. Much love to you guys. All of the precious sons out there listening. I want y'all to know this is an honorable task. This is a highly esteemed task. And this is your role going into our new kingdom. Much love to the precious sons and the precious daughters that want to do this work. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in. It's your girl, Shamar. Let mother guide you.